So my story is on unconscious bias. Um, unconscious bias is basically like preferences or, you know, it could be discrimination um, based on thoughts you have that are unconscious. You don't really think about them. So I've known about unconscious bias, but this off season, um, I had weekly meetings with professors with Anthony as well. And we went into more depth about it. And we had one specific day that was dedicated to unconscious bias. Um, so here's my story involving unconscious bias. I go to work out, you know, I'm working out. Uh, it's probably 7 a.m. We were, it's a one hour lift. I'm, I'm out of there by eight. Um, we have our virtual meetings in the off season. Um, so I gotta kind of rush home um, kind of quickly to, to get back for virtual meetings. But I look at, down at my gas tank and I'm out of gas. So I gotta stop for gas. Um, it's 8 a.m., you know, uh, people are starting to head to work, you know, whatnot. Um, I pull into this gas station. Gas station's relatively empty. I start, I start filling up my gas tank. When I'm filling up my gas tank, I'm the only one at all the pumps. And as I'm filling it up, a car pulls into the, the gas station. Now the car is filled with four people who look just like me. And I kind of look over, you know, kind of have a look and I'm like, you know, wh wh you know what, what are these people up to kind of thing, you know, as they, as they pull up at the, gas, at the gas pump right next to me. And originally I felt like, you know, I had to stop because there were so many other pumps that were available, but they kind of picked the one that was next to me. As soon as, as soon as I start to have these kind of like feelings, these, these kind of emotions, and as soon as I look at them, um, the passenger just gets out of the, out of the, out of the car and he points at me and he's like, hey man, I like your shoes. And he just points to the ground and we start having this conversation about, you know, how the LeBrons I was wearing, you know, came out when we were in high school. And it's a real friendly conversation. We start smiling, giggling, and you know, go about, go about our day, talk about various things. And then we go about our way. And as soon as I got in the car, I, I, I sat there and realized, even though me and this guy had a friendly interaction, me, me and this whole car full of people who looked just like me, had this friendly interaction. Initially, when they pulled up, I had this kind of uneasy feeling because of maybe events that have taken place in my life, you know, maybe stories I've heard from other people, maybe, you know, TV shows that I've watched, music I've listened to, you know, there's all types of factors that, that, that come into play when we're talking about unconscious bias. And it's not really, you know, it's not conscious, it's unconscious, it's something that you don't really think about. So me having those feelings and me, actually having this conversation with the people and it being to two totally opposite things, I then begin to realize that, dang, that was my unconscious bias. And, and as soon as I recognize it, you know, I, t I told myself to resist it. I feel like when we talk about these things and when these things come up in conversation, um, your, quick, your quick reaction is to say, hey, I'm, I'm not racist or, you know, uh, I'm not prejudiced. I don't have these kind of feelings. I don't feel this way. When in reality, you know, we, we all do, you know, I'm sitting here saying that I'm having these same feelings with people who look just like me, but in reality, you know, we all have them and we need to resist them when they come up and, and acknowledge them versus just letting them pass by and, and uh, not acknowledging them. So, um, you know, I hope you guys enjoy my story. You know, this is me uh, trying to be vulnerable with you guys and um, just helping us all understand that we all have these unconscious bias, but we all need to, you know, work against them and acknowledge them. Mm -hmm.